Hedge riding is at the heart of the practice of the hedge witch. It's the art of traveling between this world and the other world. It's closely linked to the witch and her craft. The Germanic word hag means both hedge and hag, and so we can linguistically see just how interlinked these two concepts are. We all know the image of the witch sitting astride her broom, but do we know why she's doing that? Flying through the night sky, cackling and screaming with the freedom and fun of it, does sound like a good time, but really, the witch is riding the world tree in order to access the other world. In the other world, she can find what she needs to progress in her work here in this world. She can call upon the aid of the fair folk and otherworldly allies to help her in her craft. Hedge riding is an ancient art. Liminal places, times, and energies are used in hedge riding to travel to the other world, to meet with the fair folk, and to learn from them what it is that we need for our work. We establish friends and connections in the realms of the fair folk, and use various techniques to take us there in our hedge riding practice. Much as the witches of the past worked with the fair folk, so too do we focus on our hedge riding practice with our connection to the fair folk and to the land. If you'd like to learn more about a Celtic version of hedge riding, please see my book Hedge Druidry, a complete guide for the solitary seeker. So what happens in hedge riding? Many people have different interpretations of what happens during the process of hedge riding. For the most part, it's seen as a form of astral travel, where we can leave our bodies behind and travel to the other world in spirit. That being said, I have traveled to the other world and come across beings there while fully in my body, while out and about physically walking the land. I used liminal thresholds to determine the point at which I crossed over, and everything that I experienced physically happened in that in-between place, in a place that was between the world, neither fully in one nor the other, but in a hazy, overlapping way of ever-changing fluidity. You can do both, or prefer one method depending on your situation. When hedge riding, we're entering into a light trance in order to see the veils between the worlds so that we can move through them. This is best done when the conscious mind takes a bit of a backseat and we're able to allow our inner eyes and mind to work alongside the conscious mind. We're totally in control of our bodies and minds at all times as we learn to straddle the worlds and the areas of consciousness. We can allow both the conscious and the subconscious mind to inform us at the same time, working together to create a broader view. In this way, we're in control of ourselves and our situation. I prefer to work with the in-between state of both conscious and subconscious. For it isn't an either-or situation here. We're fully capable of working with both at the same time. This might be new to some people who've been taught that it's either one or the other, but in hedge witchcraft, we know that there never is an either-or, but rather a both-and perspective. We can achieve this light trance state through drumming, or through movements such as rocking back and forth while seated. You can dance, or even tread the mill, a traditional witchcraft practice that uses movement and focuses on an object to create the trance-like effect. You can use chants or songs to cross over between the worlds, or even just through simply focusing your will on achieving this state. You can journey through meditation or even find the physical places where the worlds meet and cross over by simply stepping across or through a threshold. You can also use a staff, a symbol of the hedge and of the world tree, to act as a focal point in your work, and to ride the staff on a wave of power to the other world. The staff, or stang if it's forked at the top, is a traditional witch's tool, with a wand being the smaller version. There are examples of hedge riding from cultures all over the world. The Norse tradition of seder was practiced by female, and sometimes male, but usually female, practitioner of the arts, known as a vulva, who sat on a high seat. This high seat represents the world tree, 
and the practice of hedge riding. The Vulva also had a magic staff, another representation of the world tree, to help her on both her physical and spiritual journeys. She had women sing her into a trance, and there she performed divination, giving guidance from the spirits, the ancestors, and the gods to the people, much like oracular traditions the world over. Here in East Anglia, there is a famous story of a witch who climbed a high platform in the fens to practice her magic against her foes, obviously a relic of this land's forebears and their culture and the practice of the vilva. Hedge riding is a wonderfully freeing and informative experience. You will gain personal insights and wisdom, as well as the wisdom and lore that you will learn from the fair folk. The art of hedge riding has so many uses, and I'm sure that you will come up with some solely on your own. Blessings on your work. <laughs>